Just lift up your hands and exalt him. Bless his name. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Father, we exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving us Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love upon mankind. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Lord, we have returned this morning to say thank you, Jesus, for saving us through your death. For saving and rising us, O oh God, through your resurrection. Lord, we say thank you. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turn. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, and forever will be. Can we say great is? Great. confession Jesus the son of God I believe in you I believe in you it's just a simple confession lift up your hands and say Jesus the son
sentí sang they called in Jesus he came to die even forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon and name T. Grave there to prove my Savior lives because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives because he lives oh fear is gone because I Because I know
worship you. and exalt him. Father, we thank you for your death, for sending your son to die for us on the cross of Calvary. We honor your kingship. We honor your majesty.
Way. Hallelujah. Today is the day you need to come out here and dance so. Because without the resurrection of Jesus, there will be nothing like faith. You understand? So today we will say, He has done for me. Nice. He has done for me. What my mother cannot do.
you're not sweating, if you're not sweating, you are a suspect. Hey, my God is good, oh. Like a 
Kawina, clap like Kawina, clap like Kawina, clap like Kawina, clap like a. Let's go. Don't be too gentle in the house of God. Hallelujah. If you're sitting and you're not crossing your leg, executive sitting, somebody shout hallelujah. Sit like a winner, sit like a winner, sit like a winner, sit like a winner, jump like a winner, jump like a winner, jump like a winner, jump like a winner. Is someone ready to run? Are you ready to change your position? Like a winner, hey! run like a winner, 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 winner. Shout when I begin again. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Shake your body for Jesus. breaking for my sake. The chains have already broken because Jesus has risen for you and for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chains are breaking for my sake. Chains are breaking for my sake. Chains 
broken for my sake. Chains are broken for my sake. Hey! Mountains are full for my sake. up three minutes injury time injury time 11 tower <laughs> hallelujah so if you don't dance now nobody can do anything for you hallelujah Amen. three minutes sour. sour so when we say so we must praise him your response Kenya forever shall praise yeah. hallelujah so we must praise him. So we must praise him. So we must praise him. I 
If your seat is too tight, just come out for a few seconds. Hallelujah. Let's go. Resurrection Sunday. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Woo. Woo. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. You may have your blessed seats as we focus our eyes on the screens for Grace News. Welcome to House of Grace, where grace abounds. This is a grace news that keeps you updated on what's happening here, House of Grace. To all our first-time visitors, Karibuni Sana, it's always an honor to have a guest in the house. If this is your first time, please put your right hand up because our ushers have a special package just for you. We want to get to know you better. Please fill it in and let us know your information because we want to get back to you, answer your questions and pray for you. After this, we'll be having tea at a special tent right outside the church and we want to just share and have a wonderful time with you. So please don't leave immediately after the service. Join us for a cup of tea. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as we explore and discover truths that we can apply in our lives. And he says, this is the prayer that he made for them. I'm going to say, I pray that your love will do it. May abound still more and more in knowledge and discernment. This love must what? Must be filled with what? With knowledge, right? Why? Oh, the effect is so that you may approve the things that are what? That are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. One of the things that actually causes division in church or in churches is offense. You find people leave churches because of one thing, offense. I was offended. The pastor did not say hello to me, right? Or did not call me. Or maybe somebody, a believer, did what? Or something. Or, or somebody spoke to me badly. Or something. Oh, <laughs> offense. So we must guard our hearts from what? From offense. So he says that you have maybe sincere, uh, without offense, till the day of Christ. If you haven't joined yet, please join us every Sunday morning and let your spirit be revived. Let your heart be transformed by the word of God. There's a WhatsApp group that you could join by sending your number on 0725-659-444. Bible study every Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 9.45. In Acts chapter 2, verse 46, the Bible says that every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. 
they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. This is a call out for you for the second part of this verse, that when we come from fellowshipping together, the Bible is saying that we meet also and break bread together in our homes. A time of fellowship, a time to review what we have learned, a place we can pray for one another, support one another, where we can build friendships, where we can have a support system in what we call grace groups. Are you part of a grace group? If you would like to be part of a grace group, please sign up after the service. We would love to train leaders among us, those that will be leading the small groups. Do you feel that maybe the nature of your lifestyle wouldn't be able to meet you to have people come to your home or you visit another home? We are in a digital age and I know we can have grace groups virtually. So for those of you that have a lifestyle or busy time when you're not able to go, but you will still like to be part of a grace group, we'll have virtual grace groups. So please still sign up and indicate, I would like to be part of a virtual grace group because we want you to be part of a group that supports you, that stands with you, that prays with you. Sometimes we face difficult times and sometimes it's difficult to reach the pastor. But when you have another group of believers that are with you, then you have strength with you right where you are. Sign up today for a grace group. It's for your good. I promise you, you won't regret it. Attention to all our young professionals seeking purpose and community within the embrace of faith. Your journey towards fulfillment and connection begins now. Join us for inaugural meet and greet and vision casting event crafted especially for young adults aged 25 to 35. This is a space where you can gather, share, and envision the path ahead. No matter where you are in your journey, whether you're seeking spiritual direction, fellowship, or simply a sense of belonging, this event is for you. So mark your calendars, invite your friends, and prepare to embark on a journey of growth and discovery. See you there on May the 4th, 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love chini and mti conversations. They're hot. I'm a partaker. Of course, I'm growing. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love serving. I'm a partaker. Of course, I have many friends. I'm a partaker. Of course, I never leave the church. I'm a partaker. Of course, I enjoy healthy cooking. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love celebrating and supporting. I'm a partaker. Kwa nguvu za kubaba tumeshi, tumeshi nda Imani yangu ipo kwa koe Welcome to Patekas Na mintaji ficha chini ya koe we mwamba We'll be having a prison's visit to the Langata Women's Prison on the 7th of April 2024 We'll be having it after the service from 2 p.m. To 5 p.m. If you would like to be a part of those that will be ministering to those that are in Langata Women's Prisons, please sign up after the service and a form that will be presented for you there. Those of you that would like to participate, these are some of the things that we can bring. Tissue paper, arimis, bar soaps, diapers for children, milk, biscuits, lollipops, sanitary towels, toothpaste, toothbrushes and any kind of books. We also want to help the families that were affected by the fire that took place there earlier on in the month. Please, you can bring utensils for the kitchen. You can bring clothes for children and for adults. Anything you have in your home that you feel you can donate to the families that were affected by the fire that took place there, please be sure to bring. Remember, the date is the 7th of April and God wants to use you to minister to these women. Sign up after the service. See you then. Our next King's Daughters meeting will be on the 13th of April. Ladies, I want to give you early notice. Mark it out on your diary. Our guest speaker on that day will be our very own, Her Excellency, Pastor Dorcas Rigathi. Everything that you need is planted, grounded, founded in faith. For with faith, all things are it doesn't matter whether yours is a retro faith, greater faith. All you need is a grain of a master seed, equal faith. And God will activate 
whatever it is that you need. Mm. I tell you, you better begin preparing your heart, begin praying and getting ready for what God has in store for us as ladies for our King's Daughters meeting on the 13th of April. House of Grace is a caring church and every first Sunday of the month we bring non-perishable goods and clothes to reach out to the needy among us. Proverbs 19:17 One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his good deed. Every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., we meet here for our Breakthrough Prayer Service. We invite you every Tuesday, 6 p.m., for a Breakthrough Prayer Service. Come and experience a breakthrough in your life. Do you love seeing your kids' beautiful smiles? There's one simple habit that can make a big difference in the health of our children. Brushing your teeth twice a day helps remove plaque and bacteria, preventing tooth decay and gum disease. Without proper brushing, plaque builds up, leading to cavities, gum disease, and even tooth loss. Ouch, my tooth hurts. But with regular brushing, you can maintain a bright, healthy smile. And don't forget to use fluoride toothpaste to strengthen your teeth and protect against cavity. So remember, brush your teeth twice a day for a bright, healthy smile. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at House of Grace HQ. House of Grace. Good morning, church. My name is Michelle Mande. I'm 10 years old. The Children's Church presents a choral speech entitled From Tears to Joy. Welcome. They took him before the Sanhedrin, Herod, and Pilate. He was taken to Golgotha, that terrible place of death. The soldiers gambled for his robe. He looked down from the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Two thieves were crucified with my son. Um, Jesus spoke to one of them. He said, I pro Indeed, I promise I will be within paradise.
I heard his last words, my beloved son said. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It is a terrible task to perform. We must bury our dead master. We hurried to the tomb. The stone had been rolled away and an angel sat upon it. The angel said he knew we were looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but he was not there, for he has risen just as he said he would. Joy, rejoice, our master is alive. I alone did not believe. I waited for a moment outside the tomb. Someone came up to me. I thought, I thought it was the gardener. He spoke. Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? I asked the man if he knew where my master's body had been taken. He only said, Mary. It was my master. He truly was alive. Joy, rejoice, our master has risen from the dead. The woman say he lives, can it be? Peter and I ran to the tomb, it was empty, is our master alive? Some say he lives. Some say I they are not sure. The 
then suddenly he was among us. Peace be with you, as the Father sent me. So now I am sending you. Go out to the whole world and proclaim the good news to all creation. Praise God, our master lives. Praise God, our master lives. Our Lord and Savior lives now and forevermore. Thank you. Thank you. Let's appreciate our children. It is not easy standing before people. So let's appreciate them some more. Amen, amen. We love and appreciate you. Well, Jesus is alive. Alive, alive. You say alive forevermore. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Why don't you rise up on your feet? Salimia watukawa tano hivi. Tell them Jesus is alive. Alive forevermore. His resurrection validates our faith. Amen and amen. Amen. We have your beautiful seats this morning by the grace of God. Well, House of Grace, at this time, on behalf of our bishop, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all our first-time visitors. Do you have any first-time visitor? In our midst, any first time visitor, can you just lift up a hand and we'll sit. First time visitor, this is your first time. Keep your hand right up. There's also a visitor at the back. I appreciate them some more. Amen. We are glad that you took time to visit with us. Uh, you've received a package from our ashes. After this service, there's a gentleman with the placard written first time visitors. He will direct you to our visitors lounge. Also want to announce that this coming Sunday, the ladies will be uh, visiting the Langata Prisons visit in keeping with our mission and our vision as a church, which is reaching the laws through our witness. So to this end, we'll be having a prison visit this coming Sunday after our 10 o'clock service. And um, in the same breath, we'll be taking a collection for those who wants to give to us this visit after the service. So consider in your heart what you want to give in support uh, for this, to this, towards this mission. Also, as a church, we are starting the Young Professionals, Young Professional Ministry. Uh, this is a ministry to equip young adults aged between 25 to 35 years to become effective witnesses of Christ in the marketplace. So whether you are climbing the corporate ladder or forging for uh, your path as a business owner, we are here to support you uh, every step of the way. So after this service, kindly sign up. There will be someone at the information desk. Kindly sign up because we'll be having our inaugural meeting, which will be taking place on the 4th uh, of May from 10.30 to 1 p.m. right here at the House of Grace. So for logistical purposes and for planning, kindly register after this service. Also, last but not least, the King's Daughters will be happening on the 13th of April. Uh, I thought the ladies will be celebrating. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, that, that means... Unajua kuna ile, kuna kuna ile, inetonga ulululation ya wanawake, right? King's Daughters, are you there? Aha, uh -huh, that's much better. Your meeting will be taking place on the 13th of March. Kindly mark the date on your calendar. Invite your girlfriends, your colleagues, and uh, I know the Lord will bless you. Amen. Are you glad that you came to the service this morning? Are you glad that you came to the service this morning? Um, I would like us to arise on our feet for the reading of the word this morning. Amen. I also want to appreciate Bishop for this opportunity he has given me to, to speak. Let's appreciate him in, a, in an absentia together with Mom. Amen. We love him. 
and appreciate him some more. Our text this morning will be coming from the book of Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 1 all the way to 7. Ephesians chapter 2, I'll be reading from the NLT version. Give me the NLT version. The New Living Translation. Once you are what? You are dead. Because of what? Because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, We were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Verse 4, but God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much. Tell your neighbor, God loves you so much. Yeah. That even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by grace that you have been saved. Verse 6. For he raised us, us, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples. Tell your neighbor you are an exhibit. Of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us. As shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to glorify your name, O God, for the opportunity given to me, O God, to share your word this morning, this Resurrection Sunday. And as I share your word, I pray may you anoint my whole being of God, that I will speak that you want me to speak to the glory and to the honor of your name. Your word is living and is powerful. Uh, Lord, I pray may you activate your grace. Open our eyes of understanding. Touch every heart. Touch every soul to receive and be impacted and encouraged in your word. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. May have your seat. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, was the healing. Ah, 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 Yesu was the Hili Eshima. Lift your hands and say, Ah, Yesu Eshima now to go. Ah, eh. Yesu Heshima na utukufu One more time ah, ah. Yesu Heshima na utukufu I Just open your mouth and just speak in tongues Worship the Lord. He is worthy to be magnified. Fill the atmosphere with worship. 
in the atmosphere of worship anything can take place miracles indeed takes place open your mouth raise your voice to the heavens and nobody can worship god on your behalf he has saved us he has rescued us from darkness translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son give us giving us access to the grace in which we stand undeserving shown us mercy when we deserved to be condemned and father law we glorify you this morning we adore you jehovah god law who is man oh god sometimes we take pride in what we do yet we are just but a breath and father we do not do we do not pay anything oh god to to breathe the air that we breathe Everything that we are is but by the grace of God by your favor we stand because of your mercy why not for your grace and your mercy we will not be here seated here this morning and for Lord oh God we give you the glory we honor you oh God thank you for stepping down into this path of time sacrificing your life for us that if we had when we were still sinners lord you still chose us you still died for us you did not wait for us to be good you did not wait for us to be perfect but lord your grace your mercy you extended your grace you extended your mercy and we are grateful in jesus name we pray and everybody say amen amen the text we read is uh, is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus and he wrote this letter while he was in prison and in chapter 1 from verse 1 Paul identifies himself as the apostle and he says uh, chapter 1 from verse 1 he says Paul an apostle of Christ by the will of God and he says to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus Can I submit to us that saints are not elite Christians? Let me repeat that again. Saints are not elite Christians, but everyone that has believed in Christ. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say hey saints. Hallelujah. If you know their name, say hey saint Peter. Hey Saint Ozioma. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyone who has believed in Jesus Christ <laughs> is a saint because of Christ. Glory be to God. <laughs> so this church in Ephesus just like every church in the first century comprised of both Jews and Gentiles and I'll tell you where I'm going with this. Now this information is important because The first century Jew had a sense of being called they had a sense of being chosen they had a sense of being called the elect of God they had a sense of being called the chosen the chosen ones of God the covenant people of God so as a result they viewed non-Jews as outsiders or strangers or aliens Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 Paul describes this attitude that the Jews had he says therefore give me uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 He says don't forget that you who Gentiles remember the church is comprising of what two category of people Gentiles and first century He says don't forget you gentiles used to be what to be outsiders you are called what and circumcised heathens you remember the story of David and Goliath where Goliath was threatening the children of Israel and David appeared into the scene and says who is this and circumcised Philistine so he's telling them remember how you used to be called by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their what their hearts verse 12 next verse in those days you are what you are living apart from 
Christ. You are excluded from citizenship among the people who? Of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises of God. Without hope, without the promise of salvation, the promises of God did not apply to you. <laughs> you lived in this world without what? Without God and without hope. Now verse 13. But now, what has happened? What has happened? You have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you are what? You are far away from God. But now you have done what? You have been brought near to him through what? The blood of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross. Now the promises that God promised Abraham, we can claim them. God told Abraham what? In Genesis chapter 12. I'll do what? Take me to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Hmm. Are we there? Or can I read from my Bible? The Lord said to Abraham, leave your, your relatives and your, and go to the land that I will. Uh-huh. Verse 2. I will do what? And I will do what? I will bless you and do what? Make you famous or make your name great. And you'll be what? A blessing to others. This blessing is applicable to us because of Christ. Hallelujah. Because we were aliens, strangers. But now because Christ died on the cross, we are now united with Christ. And we can claim this promise. And that's why in Galatians chapter 3 verse 28, the Bible says, Now there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, this is the mystery of God hidden for ages, but now been known in Jesus Christ. For all personal studies, for the sake of a study, I will encourage you to read the book of Ephesians in your own time. Now, this book of Ephesians is divided into two segments. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and then chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6. So, the first three chapters, that is 1, 2, 3, focus on what Christians should believe. The unfolding glorious riches of God's grace in Christ. Dead sinners are made alive and gain salvation by grace through faith. And the last three chapters, that is 4, 5, 6, explains the implications of God's grace for the church, for individuals, and for the church. In other words, in light of the, what God has done for us, then what is our responsibility? So applying the truth of the first, that is chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter, chapter 3, makes possible the actions and the lifestyles of the second. That is chapter, five, chapter, chapter 4, 5, and 6. For example, in chapter 4, verse 1, Paul calls the, he tells the believers, he says that I beg you to lead a life worthy of our calling for he has been called. This is not possible if we don't <laughs> apply the truth. In chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Bwana sife sana. Hmm. Another example. In chapter 5. There is an instruction for husbands and wives. Wives do what? You know that scripture? Wives submit to your own. Uh -huh. And husbands are instructed to do what? To love their wives as Christ. That will not be possible if you don't apply the truth in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Hallelujah. Buenas sana. In chapter 1, from verse 3, Paul tells the, the church in Ephesus 
that God has blessed every believer with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. And he lists those blessings. He says, for example, we have been redeemed by Christ. We have been adopted as sons. Hallelujah. And now in chapter 2 of the scripture we just read, Paul paints a picture of a throwback. Tell your neighbor you have a throwback. A spiritual throwback, TBT. So you come and squeeze the TBT challenge. I think it faded along the way. <laughs> so in verse 1 of the text we just read, he says what? Once you are what? We were dead because of what? Because of what? Disobedience and your? This was our former state before we knew Christ. This is a spiritual state apart from Christ. Spiritually you are? In other words, you cannot respond to God. You cannot hear God. But once you are in Christ, we shall see at the end you are alive. Hallelujah. Mdogomdo? Aha. Hmm. We were dead. That means we couldn't respond to God at all. A dead person cannot respond. No matter how loud you call them, they will not do what? They will respond. So that was our spiritual state before we encountered Christ. You are dead in your transgression and sin. Verse 2. He says that we used to live in sin. Just like the rest of the world. Obeying what? The devil. The commander of the powers of the unseen world. And the Bible says he is the spirit at work in the house of, the, of, of, of who? Of those who refuse to obey God. In other words, our former state we used to operate <laughs> under different software. In that sense, one is Fesana. The software that we used to operate in is the spirit of the devil. This spirit which is at work in the hearts of those who do what? Who refuse to do what? To obey God. And by nature, we were what? Verse 3. All of us used to do what? Remember, he started by saying, you used to. Who is you? The Gentile. Believer at that particular time in the first century. And then here he says, all of us, including both the Jew and the Gentile. All of us. No one was born right. For all have seen and has done what? Have fallen short of the glory of God. So all of us used to live that way. Following the prince of the air. Akisema jabu na uliza how I. Amen. Akisema hii weekend niku happy. Unauliza ni wapi? Ni Naivasha ni Mombasa ama ni wapi? Bwana sifwe sana. <laughs> Bwana sifwe sana. <laughs> because you are operating under different software. So the enemy will just key in. Pop. And we just obey the instruction. All of us used to do what? To live that way following the passionate desires and the inclination of our sinful nature and by nature we were subject to God's anger. So someone may ask, how did that come to be? That ETBT, how is it applying? How ilikujaji? Tell your neighbor, thank you for asking. In Romans chapter 5 verse 12, Paul gives a commentary of Genesis chapter 3 about the fall of man. And he says, if you could take me there, that sin entered. Therefore, just as through one man, this one man is who? Adam. Sin entered the what? The world. And death, what? Through sin. And thus death spread to all men because all sin, because one man disobeyed. So that's why the Bible says that once we were what? We were dead. Wana sifuyesana. I want to use an illustration. George, please come. 
Pastor Clive, please, please enjoy. Minister Clive. Please come. The Bible says, assuming this is Adam, for the purposes of what? Our ila? illustration. When God formed Adam, everything was perfect. He was told, thou shalt not eat of this fruit. Then when they sinned, the Bible says what? According to Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Sin entered. Uh -huh. All humanity in Adam All of us were in Adam. Our DNA was Adam. So when Adam sinned, all sinned. All sinned. No one was born perfect. All did what? Sinned. Take me to verse 13. Or rather, verse 17. Verse 17. <laughs> For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to do what? To rule over many. That's why in Ephesians chapter 1, he says, once you are what? You are dead. Why? Because the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. I wish you were many. Jude, please come. Praise the name of the Lord. For the sin of what? This one man, Adam, caused death to do what? Rule, reign over many. If, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Now, can I have Jesus? Enoch, please come. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> uh -huh. So that everyone can see you, just stand here. So verse 18. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Adam's sin did what? Brings condemnation for every one. But now Christ came. He died and paid the penalty for sin. Remember, when God says, when you shall eat of this fruit, you shall do what? You shall surely die. Now, God is a God of justice and a God of love at the same time. In his justice, he said, you are guilty. You shall surely die. But in his love, he stepped into humanity, became human to save us from the penalty <laughs> of his judgment. So at the cross, the cross is the intersection of justice and love. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 1, what does the Bible say? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Then verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh. God stepped into humanity. Hallelujah. Became man, because only man could pay the penalty, but only a perfect sacrifice could do that. So when you read the Old Testament, you see all this sacrificial system. You know, they had to kill a lamb. That's when, when John the Baptist sees Christ, he says, behold the lamb, Jesus has the perfect spotless lamb. Notice, everyone that is born after Adam is what? Tainted with? So when God, <laughs> through Christ, became human, he had to bypass this system. And that's why he appeared to Mary. To bypass the seed of man. Because the seed of man was tainted. So he was born of the Holy Spirit without any taint of sin. Hey, hey, hey. So Jesus in that sense 
became the perfect sinless sacrifice. And he was God because only God could save. Hallelujah. Do you remember the story of the four, the four guys, the four friends who removed the roof and they, they dropped the lame guy who was paralyzed? And Jesus said, your sins have been forgiven. And the Pharisees were like, Mama, only God can forgive. This guy is blaspheming God. The reason why he said your sins are forgiven because he was fully God and fully human at the same time. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, oh, okay. <laughs> Take us back to Romans chapter 5, verse 18. And then we'll, we'll go back to our text in Ephesians. Now you understand when Paul is saying that we were once dead. You understand that part? That whatever we did was influence, right? We're operating on a different software. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. But now in verse 18, the Bible says what? <laughs> yes, Adam once sin brings condemnation for what? For every one. But Christ one act of righteousness. Which is what this one act of righteousness, dying on the cross, shedding his blood, brings right relationship with who? With God and a new life for everyone. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a, he is a what? A new creation. As a result of being united with who? With Christ. The old, please old, please come, old, 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 old. The old, the old, the old, the old. Uh -huh. The old life is gone. This old that was dead. This old that was by nature, we were under the wrath, condemnation of God. The old is gone because of one righteous act of Christ. Now you are what? Now you are what? A new creation. Hallelujah. Take me to verse 21 of the same chapter. Are you getting blessed? Aha. Uh -huh. For God made Christ who never sinned uh, to be the offering of a what? So that what? So that what? We be made right with God through giving the new King James Version. What does it say? <laughs> God made Christ who never sinned. Holy human, never sinned. Was tempted by the devil three times. He never sinned. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in who? So when God looks at you, what does he see? So say, I am the righteousness of Christ. That's why in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 he says, Now therefore there is no more condemnation. Because when we were behind, please come, 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 come here. When we were here, we were condemned. When you shall eat of this fruit, you shall do what? You shall surely die. But now because of Christ, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, he says, Now therefore because now you are a new creation, there is now no more coward. To those who are what? In Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So when the enemy reminds you of your past, remind him. My, the Bible says, I am no longer condemned. That's why when the enemy appeared to Christ and say, if you are the son of God, where did you say? You say. He responded with the word. So when the enemy comes to you with an accusation, respond to him with the word. Now, therefore, there is no more condemnation. Why? Because I am in Christ. When God looks at you, he sees Christ. You can confidently say, I am the righteousness of God. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, it is God who works in us. Now, because in the past, remember the software, you operate under, under 
Take me to Ephesians chapter 2. He's saying we were following the spirit and the prince of this world, the enemy. But now, we are operating in a new software, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit is working in us to do that which pleases God. Amen. What's our man ask me? Me ni miokoka lakini sa zingine. Hi, Pastor. Bwana swesano. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now the work of sanctification begins. And this work of sanctification, ha. Oh, the Bible says that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Now God begins to work in you, to conforming you into the image of his son. Jesus now is a template. So every day you walk with, with God, he's conforming you. Every time you slip away, the Holy Spirit in you convicts you because he is, he's reminding you, you are not here. Hey, you are here. Buona sifuwe sana. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. But the Bible says we once were once dead. Here. TBT. But now what has happened? But God. Hallelujah. But God. Remember the wages of sin is what? Remember he's a God of justice and he's a God of love. Because of his reach in mercy. What did he do? And because of his great love. Remember while we were here. Please. Uh, I'm very sorry. But let's appreciate them. Because they are helping me preach to someone. <laughs> because of his what? Because of his what? Mercy. What is Mercy. Mercy is forgiving the sinner and withholding the punishment that is justly deserved. We deserve to die. But because of his mercy, God did not wait for you and I to be perfect. In Romans chapter 5, verse 7 to 8, he says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hi. Pause, seller. Think about it. Because of his rich mercy and he loved us so much, what did he do? Okay, to shall end. Huh? But God showed his <laughs> by sending Christ to die for us while we are still sinners. Because of his what? Because of his mercy. And because of his love. In Romans chapter 8 from verse 38, he says, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Whether temptation, whether principalities, whether it's power or anything, nothing can separate us from his love. Nobody can tune you from God. Tell you anybody you are untunable. <laughs> that even though we were what? We were what? TBT, we were dead. Because of our what? Because of our sin. Because of one man, Adam. He gave us life. When? When he raised Christ from the dead. Now, please come. Now the life that you have is the life of God. You have the life of God. This life has no expiry date. This life cannot expire. It is the eternal life. Why? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why the believers don't die. They sleep. They transition. For to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Ah, because Christ conquered the death. Death now, where is your sting? It has no finality. Because Christ died and he rose again. Other people, like in Lazarus, they were resurrected, but they still died. <laughs> but Christ is alive. And we are alive in Christ. Ay, ay, ay. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the... That's why the Bible says, it is only by God's grace that you have what? Been saved. Let us go back to, for the purposes of illustration. Let me ask you a question. What did you do to come here? What did you do? Did 
Did you try to please God? It is whose work? It is Christ's work. That's why he says it is by grace. Nothing we've earned. Nobody can earn salvation. Because the Bible says even our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. Can you imagine? The standard of God is so high. Hallelujah. Because the standard of God is so high and no man could reach that standard, God had to become man and fulfill all the requirements of the law so that through Christ, you fulfill all righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hmm. Take me back to, before we go to the next verse, Take me to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 because it is connected to the next verse that we shall read. The Bible says Paul had made this prayer, you know, to the Ephesians. He's praying that their eyes of understanding to be, to be open so that they may know and understand this incredible power of God. Right? Be flooded with the light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he has done what? To those who did what? He called he is, remember, that's why I began by saying you are a saint. Not because you earned sainthood. But because you are, you are united with Christ. Hallelujah. So he says, he has given those who he called his holy people. Who are his rich and glorious. Verse 19. Uh -huh. Let's move quickly. I pray that you'll understand the incredible greatness of what? Of God's power for us who do what? Who believe him. This is the same mighty power. Aha, uh -huh. next verse. Verse 20. That did what? That raised Christ from there and did what? Seated him. Can I have a, uh, okay. The seat. Okay. Let him discuss. Buenas Fusana. Christ, sit. The raised Christ from the, and did what? Seated him in the where? where? In the place of honor at God's. Aha. Uh -huh. In the. Aha. Uh -huh. Next, the 21. Verse 21. Now he's where? Far above any ruler. Or, 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 not only in this world, but in the world to come. Aha. Buona sifu is Now in the next chapter, remember, picture this picture. Christ is seated far above any ruler, power, or leader, or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Now, in the next chapter, he says that God, because of his rich mercy and his love, he has raised us together with who? With Christ. Where is Christ? He is where? Seated. In the? In the heavenly Verse 5. Verse 6. So the Bible says, now Adam can disappear. Now we are all, TBT. Now we are in Christ. Because we are in Christ, he raised us from, he did what? He raised us from the, along with who? And what else? So because we are united with Christ, where are we? Seated with Christ in the brothers and sisters, that is our present reality. We are seated with Christ far above every power, every principality, and every... <laughs> because we are united with who? With Christ Jesus. Tell anybody you got the power. Yeah. 
so in your home and when you experience seeing the enemy is coming and trying to play kululu with you, remember who you are in Christ. You are seated with Christ. You have the authority in the place of honor. You command things. You speak those things which are not as though they are and they become. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, because this is our present reality. When you are weak, when you are in this side of the earth, what do you say? Let the weak say, I am strong because this is our pre present reality. We are strong. We have hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 6 from verse 8 even as we tie up the message. Romans chapter 6 verse 8. Where are you? Where are you? That is a present reality. For you see when God looks at you he sees you in completeness. He does not do things half half. Judges chapter 6, when God appeared to Gideon, what did he say? Almighty. And the guy was shaking like a leaf because of the Midianites. But when he appeared, he appeared to him, tell me, you are a mighty man of Allah. So when God looks at you here, you are seated with him. You are the righteousness of Christ. That is our present reality. Sometimes you may wake up and not feel like you're the righteousness of Christ, but remind yourself of this truth. I am the righteousness of Christ. I want to see you, Sana. When the enemy tries to, tries to remind you of your past, of what you did in the past, remind yourself of this present reality. I am the righteousness of Christ. Hallelujah. So now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Let's continue. Uh -huh. For we know, knowing that Christ, give me the NIV version, the NIV version, a life with Christ. Knowing that Christ had, <laughs> for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead. He cannot, he cannot die again. That's why we have eternal life. That's why we have the life of God. Amen. Hey. Death no longer has what? Has mastery over him. He conquered. Uh -huh. Verse 10. The death he died, he died to do to what? To sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Verse 11. What is the implication of that? In the same way. In the same way. Uh -huh. Count yourself what? Dead to sin. Because here look at our past. That was our TBT. Now you are in Christ. You are dead to what? To sin, but alive to God. In who? In Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Verse 12. Therefore, because of this present reality, do not let sin reign in your mortal, so that you obey its what? Its evil desires. Uh -huh. Verse 13. He says, do not offer any part of yourself to what? To sin. Because previously, remember when you were under here, in your old state, we look under different software. Hello, yeah? But now you are under a different software. Now God gives you the ability to say no to sin. That's why the Bible says when the temptation comes, God has already provided a way, a way out. I pray may God provide for you a way out. May God open your eyes to see the way out. Because sometimes the enemy might come and bombard you. Buenas fe sana. Back away the brief. But God has already provided what? A way out. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of weaknesses, wickedness. But rather offer yourself to who? To God as those who have been brought from to 
and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of what? Of righteousness. That's why in chapter 12, he says that we offer our bodies as living sacrifice, which is our acceptable worship. Wana asifuye sana. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, because someone, may, may, someone may, might ask, how is that even possible? Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Titus chapter 2, from verse 11 to 12, the NIV version. He says, for the grace, remember, it is by the grace of God that we have been what? Been saved. He says the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to who? To all people. Verse 12. What does the Bible say? It teaches us to do what? To say no to our godliness. And worldly passions. And to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. In other words, when God saved you, he did not leave you alone to fight and struggle with sin. He gives you the ability and the power to live righteously. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And brothers and sisters, this is our present reality. That now we are no longer in Adam. Now we are in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. For he, we are raised us, for he has raised us from the death along with Christ and has seated us with him, with Christ. Amen. Verse 7. What is the purpose? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. Why did God do, go through the trouble of all that? Hmm. Ephesians chapter 2. Tell your neighbor you are alive in Christ. Yeah. That is our present reality, ladies and gentlemen. So don't live like your past. Don't live like your... That's why when I began, I told you that the application of what is required of us is possible when we understand what Christ, what God has done for us in Christ. The ability to, to say no to unrighteousness is possible when we understand our present reality. Are we together? Verse 7, he says, God did all that so that God can do what? Can point us to us in all future ages as what? In other words, you are an exhibit. Tell your neighbor you are an exhibit. I think in court, you have a lawyer in the house. Okay. You have a lawyer. Any lawyer in the house? Oh, they, oh, they did not come. Okay. They didn't come today. But they are there. They're usually there. <laughs> you are a what? You are an exhibit of what? Or rather example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness. <laughs> as shown in all he has done for us who are what? United with Christ. So when you walk around, just know you are an exhibit of his grace. And this grace has no expiry date. It does not end. It is an example of the incredible wealth. Wealth has no end. It will never run dry. When you want to say, tell your neighbor you are an exhibit. Say to yourself, I'm an exhibit of God's grace. Praise the name of the Lord. All this is as a result of your faith in Christ Jesus. Through whom? We have obtained eternal life. Remember our past reality. We were once dead. We were, we were once condemned to die. 
We used to follow, we were operating on a different software. Following blindly, we did not know where to go. We were dead. We couldn't even respond to God. But now because of God's mercy and his great love, he did what? He made us alive together with Christ. And where are we? Amen. Let's appreciate them even as they sit. Now, everything now disappears. And now, where are you? You are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. That is a powerful reality. And that is our present reality. So, you should no longer, you should no longer walk like, um, what is it? I'm trying to look for an adjective. For lack of a better word, nikamu me sota any kama kama ho ha he bwana sio sana nikipatia nyingine kama nini eh another one eh kama chakara uh huh why because this is our present reality our present reality says that we are the righteousness of god we are no longer condemned that because when Christ rose up from the dead, we also rose up with him. And not only that, God made us to sit with him. Where? And when he shall come, everything shall march together. So this reality, we are not waiting to sit with Christ. We are already seated with Christ. Buona sana. That's why you can, when now read Ephesians chapter 6, the last chapter, where he's, where he's talking about spiritual warfare and all that, where he says, wear the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of what? Righteousness, have the shield of faith, and all that. It's because of this present reality. You are reigning with Christ. You are what? reigning with Christ. That even in the marketplace, you reign. Can I make a statement before I finish? Your spirituality should translate even in the marketplace. In the sense that if you are prayerful, if you are a person of the word, then that should translate in the marketplace where you're also succeeding because of your union with Christ. For example, say for example. You know, before I say that for example, it pains me to hear people say, me, I can never do business with a believer. You've heard that statement. Me, I can't believe me. Sequence that should not be <laughs> that should not be said of us because when you look at daniel in daniel chapter 6 the bible says he was prayerful he feared god yet he served three administration he was excellent at his work and he was still prayerful that's why i'm saying our spirituality should translate even in the marketplace in our studies and our life out there so we are not just saying we are reigning with christ as a concept, but as a reality. My prayer for us is that it shall translate to a day-to-day -day life. That when you wake up in the morning and your, your child is saying, I'm having a headache, you just speak healing and they're healed. Buona sifia sana. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember, we are where? We are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed this morning? Let's appreciate our brother. So, as a recap, what have we learned? What have we learned? We are seated with Christ. Before we were seated with Christ, well, who are we? We were dead. Because of what? Because of sin. Sin will talk about Adam, because of the sin of one man, disobedience, all humanity, sin was imputed in all. But because Christ died and rose again, why did Christ die? 
He did what? To reconcile us. And only man could do what? Could pay the penalty. So he became man. Fully human. Perfect. Without sin. Right? Uh huh. And now because of that, where are we now? Seated with Christ. Let me give you the last scripture and then we pray. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 16. Still talking about Christ. Our union with Christ. Remember Christ was fully human and fully God. Fully human in the sense that he got tired, he slept, right? Remember the story when he told the disciples, oh yeah, guys, let's go over to the other side. And he had preached the whole day. And because he was tired, because he was fully human, he slept. And the disciples were like, oh, master, 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 boss, boss, don't you care that we are? See, we are, we are perishing. Oh, Melala, nice story. When do Leah? Jesus just rose up and said, as God, fully God, he says, peace be, be still. Verse, give me from verse uh, 13. What does he say? Nothing is, all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked, exposed before his eyes. And he's the one to whom we are accountable. Uh -huh, verse 14. So then, since we have what? I have a great high priest who has done what? Who has entered heaven. He is seated, right? Uh -huh. Jesus the son. Let us hold firmly to what we do what? Let us hold firmly to what we believe. Where are we? Present reality. Remember. So let us hold firmly to that reality, to that truth of who we are in God, right? Uh huh. Verse 15, he says, This high priest of ours does what? Understand. Remember, I told you because of our present reality, someone may ask, Me in a struggle, Pasi. In reality, in the in an epitome, like in the CLA, the Bible says that he does what? He understands your. Because God indeed has saved us. But remember, we are still in this world. Right? And Hebrews chapter 12. Oh, guy, when you find time, go read. He says that we will not struggle to the point of shedding blood. But he says we should fix our eyes on the outer and the finish of our, of our faith. He says that he understands our weaknesses. For he faced on the same testing as we do. So if you are in this service, you have struggled with stuff. You say, Pasi Minailewa, this is my present reality. I'm seated, but I'm struggling. What else we said? What does the Bible say? He understands our, for he faced all of the same testing as we do, yet he did not do what? Verse 16. Therefore, what should we do when we are faced with all this? When we are struggling, he says, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There, what will happen? Or what will you find there? You will receive his mercy. And what will else will you find? You will find grace to help us when we need it most. Remember, grace teaches us to say no to all unrighteousness. So when you're struggling, you remember Christ, our great high priest, who was tested, tempted in all ways, yet he was without sin. So when I'm struggling and when you're struggling, he says, instead of running away like you're condemned, remember, therefore, therefore, Romans chapter 8, Tulisema, Inasema Nini, there is, there is no more condemnation because now you are a child of God. Yes, you have failed. Instead of running away condemned, he says, approach the throne of grace with what? Confidence. Because of who you are in God. And he says, when you approach the throne of grace, you will obtain mercy and you will find grace to help you when you need it most. And I pray you will find mercy when you approach this throne of grace with confidence. Remember, there is now no more condemnation to those who are in Christ. Stop running away from God because of guilt. Run to him with confidence and you'll obtain mercy and grace to help you in time of need. Where are you? Seated. Alive with who? With Christ. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon. 
We thank you, Lord, because of your words this morning that reminds us of who we are in Christ. You died for our sin as a perfect sacrifice. And the same power that rose Jesus from the dead resides in us. And I know there are some of us, oh God, under the sound of my voice, they are struggling in one area of their life. They are struggling with our weakness. They are struggling, oh Lord. And perhaps they've been living under condemnation and under guilt. Wondering whether they are still born again, whether they can still be forgiven. According to your word this morning, you have instructed us that we should look to Christ who is able to sympathize and feel us when we are weak. And Lord, even as they approach, as they approach your throne of grace with boldness and confidence because of their identity, because now they recognize who they are in you, may they find mercy, may they find grace, O oh God, to help them overcome that weakness in the mighty name of the Lord. And if you are there, just open your mouth. I don't know what weakness you could be facing. I don't know what struggles you could be, you know, encountering and enduring. Maybe one day you say, oh Lord, this is the last time. And you're finding yourself in the same cycle. I want you to open your mouth wherever you are. Approach the throne of grace. He says to you, my mercy, my grace is available to you to help you overcome. Open your mouth and just speak to him this morning in your own way, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name. Father, we realize, oh God, that we cannot be able to do in our own strength. But Lord, we thank you this morning because of our present status. We are children of God and as children and heirs together with Christ. Lord, we come to you with that issue. And Lord, I pray, oh God, may you release grace May you release mercy. Help my brother. Help my sister this morning. This morning. They are crying out to you. And I thank you. Because Lord you are able to identify with us. In Jesus name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. And let's appreciate the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Before we. Call out our offering this morning. Is there anybody here in this service who is saying, Pass immediately come to service? I did not understand about salvation, but even as you spoke this morning, I now understand that I need to follow Christ and say yes to God. Are you there? You want to give your life to Christ? Just shoot up one hand and I'll sit and I'll pray for you. I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Do, do you have anybody? Are you there? The Lord has, has spoken to you and you feel the promptings of the Spirit. He says, I knock at the door. And if I knock at the door, if anybody answers, I will come in. Anyone want to give their life to Christ? Are you there? We will wait for you. Amen. 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 I may pray for maybe someone who's watching. There's maybe someone who's online. Maybe they're not here. They could not go to church and they were just scrolling through Facebook and YouTube and you just bump into this someone and you want to give your life to Christ. Repeat this prayer. You can help me uh, repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner in need of forgiveness. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have made that prayer, inbox us and someone will get in touch with you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. And everybody say, amen. Tell your neighbor, because I do not want them to forget. Tell them three things that you've learned this morning. Just three things. Yeah. Three things. Don't be alone, my brother. Please tell somebody three things. What have you learned? <laughs> yeah, just three things. Yeah. 
Kaona kumuka tu moja, mwambie, eh, mwanzee tatu ni ngumu, lakini nakumuka hii moja. Tell them that one, it's okay. No condemnation. Kaa ni moja ni sawa. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Giving time is blessing time. You know, we give because we acknowledge that he is our source. We are already blessed. So we give from the overflow of our blessing. Amen. Tell anybody you're already blessed. Amen. So let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord, we come before you. We thank you for our giving this morning. Accept our offering, O God, of thanksgiving to you. We acknowledge that indeed you are our source, you are our provider, and everything comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say amen. If you have your tithe, I'll be honored to receive it on behalf of our bishop. Amen. For those who are tith- tithing, please come in front. I will receive it in Jesus' name. And I will worship you forever. Love you forever because this God is too good. And I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. I will love you, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good, oh. and I will love you, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good, oh. I will love you, I will worship you forever, love This God is too good, oh. and I will love you, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good, oh. I will worship you, we worship you forever, love you forever. I will love you, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. I know Rakar, who's mercy, full and kind, faithful and great. That fills his heart every morning, noon, and night. Oh, 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 love me when I didn't care. There's a Chinese child running back into his arms. Oh, 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 look how he turned my life around, made me. A shining star, his glory to reveal. And I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Or I will love him, worship you forever. God is too good, and I will worship Him, worship Him forever, love Him forever, because this God is too good, and I 
will worship Him. He worship Him forever. Love you forever. This God is too good. Oh, 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 this God is too good, 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 oh, and worship Him and worship Him. I will worship him forever, love him forever. His God is good, His God is good, and I will worship him. See, remember I told you about our mission this coming Sunday and I asked you to consider in your heart uh, what you would like to give in support of the of the mission to the Langata prisons uh, the team number we have a team number for the Langata prisons visit the team number is 801 for those who are giving via via phone the team number is 801 354 801 801 2354 let me repeat that again 801 2354 if you could just protect the till number on the screen 801 2354 let me repeat that again 801 2354 and if you have cash I'll be able to bring the basket. Amen. Amen. Whatever you can to support this mission, please do so. Amen. As the worship team sing, I'll receive it. Amen. Amen. I will worship you. I will worship you forever. If you have given by a till number, you can still come and I'll speak a word of blessing upon you. This God is too good, oh. and I will worship you. I will worship you forever. Love you forever. This is for a prison visit. This God is coming Sunday. I will worship you. I will worship you forever.
bless you. God bless you. And I will wash you. God bless you. May God bless you. Forever love you. Forever. God bless you. God bless you. No amount is too small. 